So I got the Pat's Easy Change for my Kubota BX here. We're going to be doing an install video of this and then also a product demonstration as I hook on to my first implement. So hope you enjoyed the episode. Stay tuned. Thanks. Like and subscribe. Have a great one. Bye. So I'm going to I'm going to open up the box here for the Pat's Quick Change. We're going to make sure we got everything that we need. So first thing you see is this uh, adjustment bar system. What this is used for is to maintain the distance between the, the um, lower links while you're backing into an implement. They have this bar that will slip in and we'll see that here in just a minute. Uh, the thumb screw's got to come out basically the whole way. So we'll be using this as soon as we're ready to, to hook on. Hi, right, Gigi. So next up, you get two of the Pat's quick attach um, arms. It appears they're identical. There's not really a right left. Mount hardware is included. In the package, you also get all the, the bolts, nuts, shims, and then their washers that they use for implements like my tiller. So I'm out here with the box blade, and what I'm gonna do is get a just a quick dimensional measurement on the inside the inside of the box blade, which appears to be right at 26 inches. I'm also gonna go ahead and step over and get the dimensions off of the tiller, and we're gonna try to basically split the difference between those, make sure we're not not in too much more than what the uh, the minimum of the two implements are. So it's 26 inches on the minimum, and then on the maximum it's 31. So I'm gonna take that same measurement on the tiller and we're just gonna find out where we're at. So on the tiller, it's a little bit different because it doesn't have the saddle style pins. It's just got a typical pin. Here, we're significantly narrower. We're at basically 20 inches, and to the inside of the hole is 24. So that tells us we've got some pretty tight tolerances to work with and we may not be able to get it perfect for both units but it is truly an example of where a quick hitch might not be the best option in all cases so as you saw we just went out and got the measurements for the distance between both the tiller and the the box blade what i've got here is this is just a hitch pull bar that i use most of the time for this the little bit of weight that it provides and I also have a ball here. Sometimes you'll see that I've got weights mounted to it. Um, right now it's just just being put on there. But what's also nice about it is it is exactly 26 inches from the outside to the outside. So this is the same dimensional spread as the box blade which will make it really convenient for me to use with the, the PAT system I can demo it without actually having to go out and hook onto that box plate so I can get all the adjustments. So I'm going to walk through those processes of getting those installed. Stay tuned. So I'm going to start with taking out, they've got a, a cotter pin here. I'm going to tap that out of the hole. Take the pin out. That's the side. So I'm going to first install the, the main pin here. And you'll see on these pins, they've got a large hole, and that hole is actually for that crossbar. That hole goes to the inside, so you need to line up the, the trunnion ball and that, and that goes in. So after you get this on here, we need to figure out which of the shim stocks that we're going to need. We've got a thin one and a thick one. And I believe I'm going to need the thick one for this BX tractor. So here's my two thick ones. Here's my two thin ones. I don't believe I'm going to need them. The other thing we're going to need is the two roll pins that they send because they use a roll pin to hold the shim stock in place. So what I'm going to do, since I know these are sitting kind of where they need to be, I'm going to inspect what it would look like to have that thick shim in. 
on each side. And looking at that, they appear to be going up at the same angle that the, um, the ar lift arms are. So I believe that is the one I want. And for the, now we can take this back off so I can reinstall the, the roll pins in those shims. So I'm just using a block of wood. I got the shim stock here. I'm gonna take one of the roll pins. I'm gonna drive it in until it's just into that. So it's through the hole and it's relatively square in that piece of shim stock. Do the second one. That looks good. Now I'm gonna pull my cotter pins out. Pull the main pins. Put the shim stock into the path system. You can see it sets in on the bottom. There's a hole that goes through. Going to reinstall the PAT system back onto the lift arms. If I do it the right way. Daddy, you are the one. I am going to do the other one, Gigi. I'm just going to take a hammer and tap that roll or that cotter pin in fully. And pop this one off shim through the hole, and reinstall. That's called a washer. Oh, it's so shiny. It's so shiny, huh? It's like, like a piece of jewelry, isn't it? Yeah, and this one too. It's like a one you want Now that those shims are installed, we're gonna put the U bolts over. The lift arm. And the other one, I can do this one. Yep, uh, it goes back here, sweetie, right in those two holes. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna grab two lock or two flat washers oh. and two nuts. I'm gonna run those up real quick. Ooh. I would do this one. You're a good helper, Gigi. on first. This is the no, you gotta put the washer on first. Let me let me do it and then you put the nut on. Okay? And let me get it started and then I'll let you turn it up. Alright, just spin it. There you go. Keep spinning it. Keep spinning it until it's all the way up. Alright, so we're gonna leave those loose for a second while we get the the bolts that are actually used on the inside and the outside of the arm, and that's used for centering and angle. another one. Yep, we'll use those in a little bit. That just wants it done. Can I just yep. on? All right, thank you, Gigi. Careful. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to take our, my bar, put it back in through the pat system to get my spread of 26 inches and then I'm going to adjust the pat system on the lift arms to make sure that they're setting as square as possible to the implement as I can get. All right, using the 916 socket, I'm going to look to see what it needs to have done. And I believe it needs to be screwed in from the outside in, kind of to that maximum point. Also knowing the wider out I spread, um, the more I actually need tightened on the inside. Yes, that's what goes there. Alright, that should do the patch system for that part. Now we're going to take a tape measure and use the rod 
to measure out the 36 inch. Oh, before I forget, I also need to go ahead and bend these cotter pins. And I'm not going to flare them out too much in case I ever need to take it off again. So I'm not fighting that. Just enough to keep them from jumping out. These, they have a little hairpin clip. Rod. It's cute. But I'm not going to really need it. Because I'm not going to keep this on since it's a not really that required. Now, since I know this is 26 inches, I'm going to give myself a little bit of slack. I'm going to lock down that wiring rod and I'm going to pull off this bar. So that should be the system installed. Let's go hook onto the box blade. concerned about it having a, a quick hitch with all three points connected at the same time as with the hydraulic top link. This, this is as simple as running that cylinder out to be where it needs to be at. Simple as that. Now, the, the main problem ones are these lower arms. I just flip those down and it's in the lock in. Do the same on this other side, let it snap in. I'm hooked up. system over a traditional three-point hitch was with my hydraulic top link that I chose I went for a little bit longer of a top link because it gave me additional stroke I was at the bare edges of where this box blade would be effective when it was fully sucked in of engaging either the scare fires or that front cutting edge I had plenty of rock down the other way if I would have got a traditional three-point hitch or a traditional quick hitch all I would have done is moved everything back and effectively not gained any additional advantage. By the PAT system, I'm only moving the lower two arms out on that hinge point, which gets me a whole lot better mechanical advantage at this top leg, or not a mechanical advantage, but a lot better positioning. I'm going to go through the swing of motion with this hydraulic top link and the PAT system just to show what I'm demonstrating and I'll be able to show you some footage of when I first put the hydraulic top link on the limitations or I guess more the range of motions with the box blade at that time. So check out this next little bit of video and you'll see how much better this box blade is going to be. Obviously in the raised position we're getting more height out of it which will help for unloading off of the trailer and backing off but you'll also see that even though we're not swinging in quite as much on the bottom side of the stroke or the stroke of the cylinder we'll still have plenty of engagement with that um, with that back blade if we're going to cut back So that's going to cover it for today's installation of the PATS 
quick hitch system on my BX2660. Keep an eye out for a future video. We're actually going to be using this box blade to build a parking area for an RV as well as dress up a parking lot. In that video, we are going to demonstrate the advantage of having a hydraulic top link with a box blade over what you would normally do with a mechanical top link. So stay tuned for that video coming out shortly. Thanks and have a great day.